Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. Together we will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end, we calculate and analyze the financial ratios. The company we're going to look at is Texas Pacific Land and Trust. This is an oil and gas EMP. That's exploration and production, which is the early stage of energy production. This includes searching and extracting oil and gas. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $4.5 billion. They're trading at 584. That's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that back to today's dollar amounts. That's what I'm doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. It's a cash flow that's left over to grow your business. Now we need the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. We also need the revenue, which is also on the income statement. That's the sales for each year. And their sales have gone up tremendously every year. It almost doubles every year, which is amazing. So they're in a hyper growth stage. Let's look at the capital structure. They have no debt. Let's get the beta so we can figure out the cost of equity. We use the beta in the capital asset pricing model and that's 1.93. And now let's go back to their balance sheet to get their current assets. We need current assets to calculate the current ratio later. And current assets are assets that can be easily liquidated into cash within 12 months. And that's $473 million. And that's made up of $303 million cash, $62 million receivables, and $170 million of inventory. We also need current liabilities to calculate the current assets. That's 25 million. And that's accounts payable of $19.2 million. That's how much money the company owes its creditors and suppliers within the next 12 months. And 5.3 million in taxes payable. That's how much money the company owes the government in taxes. Let's also get the equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 512 million. Equity equals total assets minus total liabilities. They don't give us much information. They just give us other accumulated comprehensive income. And that's negative $1.5 million. That's the unrealized losses on the securities. So unrealized means it hasn't sold those securities to realize the loss yet. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income. That's $400 million. That's how much money the company makes on its operational day-to-day -day business. Let's look at the capital structure. They're 100% equity. The cost of equity is 17%. That's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. Then we had to discount these numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value of the company of $6.9 billion. We divide that by 8 million shares. And we get an intrinsic stock price of $8.92. It's trading at $5.84, so it's trading at a 35% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street has. They're at $6.10. So they're also saying this company's a buy, but it's pretty close to intrinsic value of their number. Let's see where the stock has been trading. So it looks like it hit low 800s at some point, but then it dropped a lot of coronavirus and it came back up. Seems like a really great company to invest in. They have no debt. They're growing at a fast pace. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a good PE, a bad price of sales, and a bad price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. To get earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. And their PE is 14. I like to see below 15, so that's good. This indicates investors are willing to pay $14 for $1 of earnings. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. Their price of sales is 9. I like to see below 2.5. This indicates investors are willing to pay $9 for $1 of sales. 
Price to book is stock price over book value per share. Book value per share is equity over shares outstanding. They're at 8.8. .8. I like to see below 3.5. This indicates investors are willing to pay $9 for $1 book value. They have a really high current ratio, really good ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, 19.4. They don't need more than a 2, so they're sitting on a lot of cash. So they're not using that money efficiently. They could be using it to grow the business or maybe invest in something else. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're at 62%, so they're really providing great value to the equity holders. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Baker Hughes, Canadian Natural, Diversified Gas and Oil, Denberry, who just filed bankruptcy, Marathon Oil, Occidental Petroleum, Shorecore, Transatlantic, TPL, the company we're looking at, US Energy, and White Cap. And if the company is Canadian, I put a Canadian flag. If the ticker ends in TO, that stands for the Toronto Stock Exchange. And if TPL has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in price to earnings, price to sales, and price to book, which are important ratios. But Denberry is best in two of the three, and they just filed bankruptcy. So what does that tell you? Current ratio, they have the highest. ROE, which is an important ratio, they're by far the highest. Nobody's even close. They're providing lots of income to the equity holders which is a really good sign of a profitable company. USEG and TPL are the only companies with no debt, which is a great thing, especially during coronavirus, to have no debt. TPL is a little less than average in market cap. They're at 4.5 billion, average is 5.8 billion. So it seems like a great company with a great future. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching.